channel so today i'll be showing you guys how to make this peplum dress and for that you might need about three yards of fabric or two and a half depending on your size so the first thing i'm going to do here is to um i've already cut out this is going to be my top bodies here as you can see the fabric is folded into two one is my front panel and then the one for my back panel has the seam allowance here for the zip about one 1.5 inches for the zip allowance so the next thing i'm going to do how i got the width of this here the width i'm using here is just basically the widest part of your upper body for me that's my bust so i'm using the bust measurement divided by four so my bust measurement is 42 divided by four that's 10.5 so that 10.5 i added one inch to it for seam allowance so that's how i got the width here so i have about 11.5 here and then the same which is what I'm using for the back, but instead I added 1.5 at the center back to that measurement from the front so I can use that my zip allowance. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to go up to my shoulder. My shoulder measurement is 16 divided by 2. That's going to be uh, 8. I'm going to mark that here and then put in my armhole. My armhole measurement is uh, 20. Round armhole is 20 divided by 2. That's going to be 10. So I'm going to mark that here. And then connect it this way and then just draw in this curve format so guys the next thing i'm going to do is to put in my neckline so i'm going to mark about three inches here by 3.5 because remember the one on the picture it has a wide neckline almost like a boat neck so i'm going to come down here by about 3.5 down but so 3.5 down here but three inches this way and then i'm going to connect it this way and then the next thing I'm going to do, normally, okay, I'm going to just mark my one inch of shoulder slope and connect it this way. Normally, when you're doing, if you want a normal wide boat neck, what you're going to do is you're going to divide this measurement here by two. So that's somewhere about 2.5 and then you're going to connect it this way. So that's how you normally make your boat neck. And you're going to stop at three inches instead of making it 3.5. But the one on the picture is not really like this wide so i'm just going to bring mine for, forward so instead of dividing this distance here into two and making the normal boat neck i'm just going to maybe instead of 2.5 on this side i'm going to bring it maybe to 1.5 so the neckline is still going to be wide but not as wide as how you would normally have in a boat neck so this is what i'm working with right here so the next thing i'm going to do now is to mark my one inch for the back neckline so one inch down here and then i'm also going to connect that from this same point here so let me show you guys because it might be too much right now so you see this mark that i made here is my neckline now so i'm just going to cut out for my back neckline first so you see this is my back neckline split it open here and this is my uh, zip allowance for the back here so you see but now if i want to cut my front neckline this one here is going to be my front neckline so but before that i'm going to go down here and put in my waist so my waist measurement is 36 divided by 4 um that's going to be 9 so 9 plus extra 2 inches 1 inch for that in and 1 inch for seam allowance so that's going to be 11 i'm going to mark that here and then from there i'm going to connect these two together so i'm going to cut that out So guys, after that, I'm still going to cut out my armhole now. I'm going to cut this out here. Cut my shoulder slope. Right? And then, now, my, um, my back panel is ready. I'm going to remove that now. But I'm going to continue with my front panel. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to come down here by the halfway through. That's about 5 inches down here. I'm going to go in by half an inch here right and then i'm going to connect that so if you have a curved uh, ruler that would be better use it to curve that out so i'm going to go ahead and cut it so after that i'm going to cut out my neckline my front neckline now so this is it here for my front neckline and then the next thing so guys, this is it here. I've gone ahead and cut out everything. So what I need to do now for my front bodies uh, is just to um, go in this way 
I'm going to mark my distance of uh, nipple to nipple measurement breast point. So for me, that's going to be eight. So I'm going to divide it by two. So that's four inches. I'm going to mark four here. And then at this point of this four, I'm going to put in my shoulder to my breast. So that's about uh, 11 inches down here. My shoulder to breast point. And then I'm going to come down two inches before that. Two inches under that, that's my breast line. So my shoulder to breast line is here. And then come down two inches from that. So that's where my dart is going to stop. So this is going to be my dart. So all I have to do now is mark one inch on this side, one inch on this side, and then connect it this way. Sorry, not one inch, half an inch on this side, half an inch on this side. So that's going to be for my dart or uh, for the um, breast. So what you're going to do is I'm going to just notch it here. I'm going to notch this all the way even for the front and the back so but the only difference now you're going to do the same dating on this side and the same dating on on the other side of the front but the only difference is at the back my dart is going to stop at uh, around eight so your shoulder to your chest line so that's where my will stop so my the dart at the back is going to come up all the way to this point here for the two sides of the back so now this is done i'm going to move over to something else this here is the bottom so basically how you're going to um, get the length you're using for the bottom here so guys this is what um, how you're going to get the length for the bottom is just basically you're going to measure the full length you're using so I'm using around 42 and then you're going to subtract your shoulder to waist from that 42 so the full length I'm using that's my shoulder to my knee is 42 and then I'm going to subtract my shoulder to waist from it my shoulder to waist is 18 and then I, I subtracted it from this so i have about 20 uh 22 inches for the length here and then you're going to add extra 1.5 to it for your seam allowance so the length i'm using here is about uh 23.5 so that's what i'm using here extra 1.5 to it so that's how we are going to do it so we've talked about the length so now for the width you're going to use the widest part of your lower uh body so that's for me is my hip and then the hip measurement you're going to divide it by four so my hip is 48 divided by four is 12 plus extra one inch that's what i use as the width here and then you add about 1.5 for your zip allowance so you see my fabric is folded into two here but one is my front panel one is the back panel so the next thing you're going to do is to move over to the waist and then from on the waistline you're going to put back your waist measurement so like i said before my waist measurement is 36 plus extra two inches um, 36 divided by four that's nine plus extra two inches that's going to be 11 so i'm going to mark that here and then the next thing you're going to do is to mark your hip line so for my waist to my hip is about um 9.5 inches so i'm going to put that in here and then on my hip line like I said before, my hip measurement is just the full measurement, the full fold of this fabric. So I'm going to take the measurement I have here, which is about 13 inches. And then on this last line here, I'm going to subtract one from that measurement from my hip. So whatever measurement you got from your hip and all the seam allowances, you come down to the end of your skirt and you're going to subtract one inch from that. So mine was 13, subtract one from me, that's going to be 12. And then you're going to come down here by one inch right so come down here by one inch and then connect this line together you're not going to connect this line straight to the hip line because if you do that your that this part is going to be pointed by your hip so it's going to have like an ear on the two sides so that's why it's good to come down by one inch and then connect the line so that it will smooth out a little bit before the curve so after that you're going to also connect this your waist to the hip so guys, after that, I'm still going to put back in my dart again. The dart from the uh, um, the four inches distance that I use for the top part, I'm going to bring it down here again. So that's your breast point measurement is what I'm using here again. So from there, I'm going to, so my, my hip line here stops at 9.5, right? So my dart is going to stop two inches before my hip line. So that's going to be at this 7.5. So that's where my dart will stop. So I'm going to connect it down this way. And then you're going to mark half an inch on this side, half an inch on this side. And then that's going to be your dart. So like that, I'm going to transfer this this way. I'm going to notch it so that I'll know that I'll transfer this dart on the four sides, right? Two of the front and two of the back. And then after that, I'm going to just go ahead and cut this hole out and then open up the 
zip along. The step is to cut my sleeve. So to cut my sleeve, I'm just going to measure around my armhole, right? I'm just going to measure the armhole part. So what I have here is about 11 inches, right? Because you can't just take your normal armhole now to cut this. Like if I use my normal armhole, I'm not going to get the accurate uh, measurement because when I'm done, um, if I cut the sleeve with just my normal armhole, then it might not cover all the way here because remember, you're attaching it to the body of your sleeve and your sleeve comes with um, some uh, room for your um, seam allowance for the top parts, right? So remember, when you when you were cutting your armhole, you used just your armhole divided by two, which was 10, and it stopped here and then you gave it a curve. But remember, you, but the body of this here has extra seam allowance. So if you use just directly come to this fabric, divide your armhole again by two, and just use 10 you can't be able to cover up this space because this um the space you have here now is not 10 inches it's more than that because of the extra seam allowance that came with this here so the armhole you you used was just to make this one here was just to get this measurement here but you can't use it when you want to cut the sleeve on itself because that that's when you have that extra like after putting in the sleeve you find that you maybe you still have some space left so guys the next thing i'm going to do so the 11 i have i'm going to place it here so it fits in here and then the next thing i'm going to do is to come down by four inches for my sleeve cap and then the next thing i'm going to do is just place my tape this way from this point here to this point here so mark a straight line if you have your ruler that's better mark a straight line and then figure out the distance i have here so from this point to this point here is 12 so find midway of the 12 is 6 and then i'm going to give it a half curve here and then give it a half curve facing down so one facing down one facing up and then after that you put your sleeve weight so for me that's going to be uh 14 which is 7 plus 1 that's 8 i'm going to put that here and then I'm going to connect it up this way. So to determine your length, it depends on you, whatever length you want to use for your sleeve and then add 1.5 to it. So I'm going to just cut this out right now. So guys, this here is my sleeve. I have two of them here. So I have two pieces of that here. So what I'm going to do now is to go ahead and join my sleeve. And then for my peplum part of it, so this is my peplum here. So you're going to measure around your waist times 2 or whatever you want to use times 2 times 2.5 whichever one you want to use so this is what i'm going to be using for mine so basically how you're going to and then the length it depends on you for me mine will be about 8 inches of length so i added 1.5 to it uh to make it uh so that i can use one inch to fold the end and half an inch to join it so the next thing I'm going to do, it depends on you, you can use lining. So if you're using lining, you're going to cut another piece of this and it's going to be your lining. So how you're going to do it is just, so let's say this is the lining that I cut, right? So you're going to cut the same width, the same length as the, um, the main. So let's say this is my main bodice and then this is the lining. So if you take your lining, you're just going to join it together this way. So let's say this is still my lining, right side facing each other. And then you're just going to make a stitch all the way down. Instead of folding the end this way, like how you normally fold the end of your clothes, you're just going to take your lining, line it this way, just close up the end. And then you're going to fold it, iron it. Let's say you fold it and then you iron it, right? So now your lining is on the inside. And then this part here is the part that you attach to the body of your dress. So let's, this is how you're going to... But I, won't, but I won't be using lining for mine so i'm just using the fabric and i'm going to just fold the end and then just attach it so this is how you're going to pleat it so you're going to start this way it depends on you however you want to start so basically you pleat one facing this way and then you pleat another one facing this way you just have to eyeball it to make sure that they are equal right so it depends on you how much fabric you want to use and to make the um the peplum part so you see you put it and then you pin it down so basically this is how you keep going so you see one is done then you take up again it depends on you the distance you want maybe you want four inches distance if you want a bold pleat and then you just fold another one and then you bring another one facing this direction one and this part is done you pin it down 
so guys then you go again if it's for this four inches distance you want you just try fold again and then this one is facing this direction you take it up and then the next one is facing this direction you see let me show you guys again so this is it here you just fold one facing this way fold the next one facing you you fold another one facing this direction you fold the next one facing you so you see one goes this way the next one goes this way so that's how you're going to keep pleating and then when you're done with your pleats when you've pleated everything you're going to take your main front bodies and join my top part so you see i've put in my darts on the back this is the back panel here so you see and another thing i did for the back is you see the back is shorter than the front because there's no bust at the back and sometimes when you use the exact length it tampers with the zip and it doesn't look nice so what i normally do is i reduce the back by half an inch but i don't reduce it all the way to the front i just blend it in before i get to the side so i just cut out about half an inch on the back and just blend it in here so the sides are still equal but i just shorten it a little bit so there that's it for the back here you see it's just shorter than the front by just half an inch but the sides are still equal so the next thing I'm going to do here is to, the next thing I'm going to do now, you see how it blends in, but the sides are still equal, it just goes this way. So the next thing I'm going to do, I've gone ahead and pleated my pattern for the, uh, my peplum. You see, the pleats are done, but I've not ironed it. I'll iron it when I'm done. So you see, I've pleated everything. The next thing I'm going to do, my skirt has also been joined, is to check my waist. Check that the waist of your skirt and the waist of your top is the same. So that you don't make any mistake just make sure that the waist of this your skirt and the waist of the uh, top part is the same and then what you're going to do is to place this is the waist of my skirt i'm going to place it this way and then i'm going to take the peplum I'm so guys you see the next thing is to place my peplum on top you see opened up my skirt placed it placed my peplum on top make sure that everything is equal and then the next thing i'm going to do is to place my top on top of it so you see i have three layers now you see this is how i'm going to place my top the, the other two i placed it facing each other right on top of each other but this one now you see how i placed it i opened up my top and then placed it this way so the top is now open so you make sure that everything is equal rearrange it and then place it properly and then you go ahead and join the three layers so you're just going to go to your sewing machine and start making a stitch half an inch half an inch all the way to the end when you're done you put in your zip at the back so guys this is it here the dress is done um i, I will still have to go back in and put in my uh lace so if you have your lace you can just go in Fold your fabric this way and then just placing your lace, sew it on top all the way around. For me, I won't be using any lace, so I'm just going to end up folding mine the way it is. So you see the back, how I did it here. I folded everything in when I was cinching in my back line, the back midsection here, and then I put in my zip. So you see, this is sewed in here. So this is what it looks like. It's sewed into the back here. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.